name is Dr. Stan Berman, Vice President for Academic Affairs at William James College. Welcome to Mindful, a series of interviews with our William James College faculty. In this exciting series, we have the opportunity to have conversations with a number of our faculty members about their scholarship, research, and applications in the fields of psychology, counseling, and applied psychology. Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Natalie Court, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, I'm very eager to have this conversation with you about racial and ethnic disparities. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to begin with, on some ways, an obvious question, but perhaps with not such an obvious answer, mm -hmm. which is why is it important for mental health professionals to pay attention to this key topic? When we see issues of racial ethnic disparities, which really refers to differences or inequitable care provided to racial ethnic minorities in comparison to whites in this country, it's as a result of a multiplicity of different factors. But one primary factor that I really try to emphasize to my students that we are responsible for is the implicit biases, racial biases that we carry as a result of this larger, um, really complicated history. And I try to highlight the fact that we as mental health providers come into this field in large part because we are really quite compassionate people. Many of us, like the general public, carry pretty negative, unconscious biases about people of color. And that shows up in the ways we misdiagnose people of color more frequently um, with conditions that are much more severe. Um, it shows up in the poor quality care that's provided, the fact that we are less likely to provide evidence-based treatments to racial ethnic minority patients. It shows up in the fact that we don't necessarily invite racial ethnic minority individuals into our clinical trials that establish the efficacy and effectiveness of treatments. If we don't have enough courage and enough humility to actually excavate some of the painful, tragic past of this country and its impact on us individually as people and collectively as a field. What a, a powerful and disturbing, but not new news, mm -hmm. uh, description of, of what's going on. What are your thoughts about that excavation for the healthcare provider? Mm -hmm. How does that the healthcare provider become more aware of some of their uh, unconscious uh, baggage. Sure. All of your presidents but one are white men that as a little child that you might assume that only white men can actually be president. Mm -hmm. It's not a real jump to assume that if the vast majority of your Fortune 500 executives are white men to assume that only really white men can achieve that level of power and we can give examples whether it's school superintendents whether it's politicians if that's the level of exposure that you have your brain efficiently um, makes the assumption that excellence brilliance success is associated with maleness and with being white with my students i try to highlight that that Having a, implicit biases doesn't mean that you're a racist, sexist, horrible person. That is not what it means. It simply means that your brain has been exposed to information, that it's overlearned, um, and therefore our job is to be aware of that. To be aware of the fact that this country's history um, presents a contemporary narrative mm -hmm. that continues to be quite toxic when it comes to racial ethnic minorities, uh, when it comes to women, and as such, we shouldn't be surprised that our brain gets that. If you live in this country, it's really hard for you to not have some implicit racial bias. And I want to emphasize that, that I mean that for everyone. Mm -hmm. So um, as a black person, I am subjected to the same implicit negative biases about black people. So to be humble about that and then be courageous enough to do the work. About 15 years ago in the New England Journal of Medicine, at a national cardiology meeting, there was a table in the exhibit hall, mm 
and cardiologists were asked to stop by and look at a medical chart and create a diagnosis for the patient's symptoms mm -hmm. and as well to create an intervention plan. Mm -hmm. And it was the exact same information, mm -hmm. but one had a photograph of a, I think a 55-year-old white male mm -hmm. and one had a photograph of a 55-year-old black male. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, sometimes there was concordance in the diagnosis, mm -hmm. but the intervention plan, plan was much more activist mm -hmm. for the white patient. Yes. Yes. And so it's very striking. Absolutely. So you talk about the concept of mindful diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Would you say more about that concept? Gender and as a result of the racial ethnic identity of the client, even though the symptoms presented are the same, the background, the demographic information is the same, we see that um, when it's a black male, the diagnoses provided are the most severe. Uh, psychiatric diagnoses like um, schizophrenia, um, when it's a white male, um, least the less severe conditions are, are applied, and again, it's the same exact same case. Um, so, in terms of diagnosis, uh, I really try to highlight to my students how incredibly essential it is for us. To for us as um, clinicians, as mental health providers, to become decent diagnosticians. Most people are not ever gonna get that level of training and exposure um, in utilizing structured clinical interviews um, to diagnose psychiatric conditions, but we can still, most of us, um, achieve um, a pretty, pretty solid diagnostic techniques that again are not rocket science. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is based mm -hmm. on being curious and so that curiosity should lead you to ask a lot of questions, mm -hmm. right? And to listen carefully to what's being said. Um, it's about, again, humility and that shows up in not assuming that we understand mm -hmm. it, what the client is saying, mm -hmm. right? So oftentimes in conversations we have these little abbreviated statements um, you know, a client might say, well, you know, I've been feeling down. You know what I mean? And sometimes we as clinicians, we're like, yeah, I know what you mean. And so I really highlight to my students, like, actually, you might want to ask a further question. Actually, what do you mean when you say that you're feeling down? Yes. Because my down might be something completely different. Yes. Yes. Right? So let's not assume that we understand exactly um, what it is that the client is saying, um, especially when they're making what really are vague statements. So be curious, be humble and ask more questions, um, follow up questions, clarifying questions. Use the DSM. Internalize perspectives about classification systems um, mm -hmm. and perspectives that see those systems as being um, reductive. No classification system can ever actually reflect all of mm -hmm. psychopathology. We are using classification systems as tools to categorize in ways that we can actually make sense of. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and people have taken time and effort over decades of trying to understand those systems that we've developed and change them when research indicates that they need to be changed. Mm -hmm. So again, this goes back to not being arrogant in that I, Natalie Court, um, can't decide that I'm going to like develop my own classification system and I'm going to use it um, as I see fit in diagnosing clients mm -hmm. without any research, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So given the fact that we have systems that have been examined, that have uh, some track record of utility, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for something that has a solid evidence base. Part of the struggle that people oftentimes have is that they're not actually relying on the system, right? or they're not fully utilizing it, mm -hmm. right? So we are moving on making a diagnosis after a few questions that are answered by a client. Mm -hmm. And any 
diagnosis really requires a much more thorough evaluation, mm -hmm. right? So if you haven't assessed whether or not your client's symptoms of depression, what seem like depression, mm -hmm. um, are culturally normed, yes. then you actually haven't fully used that diagnostic system because every condition, mm -hmm. um, every criteria ask you to um, mm -hmm. to actually rule out culture. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't done that, yeah, I ha actually haven't used the system. Mm -hmm. If you haven't asked about medications that your client um, is using or medical conditions or physical ailments that your client might be suffering from, um, then you also haven't used the system. For example, your client definitely is reporting depressive symptoms that have exceeded two weeks. Um, however, and you're feeling really good that hmm, this seems like major depression, this seems like a major depressive disorder. Um, but if you haven't asked about their medical conditions, mm -hmm. um, you might have failed to get the information that your client actually has chronic fatigue syndrome, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you might have failed to um, get in the information that your client has a traumatic brain injury, mm -hmm. right? Um, or that they're utilizing a particular medication that has depressive symptoms as a side effect. There's so much that is important for us to to understand and to ask, and I encourage my students to utilize their curiosity, to be humble, um, to recognize that um, you know perfection is not something that that is achievable. Yes. Um, however, um, we owe it to our patients to be to give them uh, care that is actually based in something beyond mm -hmm. what it is that we think. I know that you're um, active in speaking to community groups, and when you're speaking to uh, a, uh, a gathering of uh, people of color who are feeling, I need to seek mental health care, mm -hmm. and uh, an individual arguably is entering this search for the right match mm -hmm. with a fair amount of uh, uh, perhaps distrust, mm -hmm. skepticism, concern, will I be understood and get the care I need and deserve? Mm -hmm. um, could you speak a little bit about how you speak to f people about seeking care? I suggest, you know, somewhat humorously, but not, <laughs> but actually I'm quite serious, um, that you might want to ask your clinician if, you, you know, in that first, um, the first time you meet, you know, you know, what have you done about your implicit biases lately, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And you know, and if your cl the clinician looks at you with a blank stare um, and and says, "What do you? What is that?" Um, my suggestion for you is that you know, you you, you turn around and you leave. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to have someone who's sitting across from you who has taken the time demonstrated the humility to actually recognize, mm -hmm. explore, excavate, mm -hmm. monitor their implicit biases. Mm -hmm. And if they haven't, believe me, the care that you will receive will be compromised. Mm -hmm. um, and there are many of us out there who can answer that question quite comfortably. It's not to say that we can say, oh no, I'm, I'm, my biases are all done. I've, I've taken care of that, but that the answer is that, um, you know what, I, I'm constantly doing the work to understand myself better, to understand our history better and how it impacts me and what I do. Um, and because I'm really committed to this work and I know that if I don't do the work on my own to understand that history, that it might be harmful to others. Yes. Um, I'm, I, this is something that I take seriously. So I appreciate the question about what I've been doing with my implicit bias lately. Um, and, and we can continue having a conversation about any concerns that you might have about my ability to appreciate the complex life that you're coming to me with. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the type of response that you want a clinician to be able to provide. That's really sage advice. I'm really grateful to you uh, and I thank you so much, uh, Dr. Natalie Cord. Thank you so much.
For more information about the faculty members interviewed today and the topic of discussion, please follow these links.